do you do you kind of feel like um I know you mentioned that you know, you know do you get you know your feedback on podcasts, but do you kind of feel like it's also kind of limits you know your you know potential you know um audience you know uh because not everybody as we all know lightning adoption is not nearly where you know it can be or it should be and if um lightning in itself it's still i think i think most people agree that it's still a niche it's still in you know it's still very early in terms of you know, development even among bitcoiners so how much more would it you know would it would you know new users find it difficult to actually you know if they wanted to support their new you know support new users trying to support you know podcasters you know on fountain do you think uh, there's you know there's kind of barrier to entry and how do you you know work on you know solving that yeah great point i think definitely there is right now a little bit of a barrier so obviously when we're speaking to podcasters as soon as we say the word bitcoin you know that will put people in a certain frame of mind there's a lot of connotations about what that is and what that means so it does put some podcasters off for sure. But I think one of the things that's been really interesting to see over the past year since we've been working on Fountain is that, you know, there's developments outside of what we're doing and outside of even the podcast industry that are pushing this all forward. So a massive one was when Cash App um, added lightning support. That was just so helpful for us because suddenly as a podcaster, it becomes more, it becomes less of a you know, niche thing to to try and uh, do. It it becomes something that okay, suddenly sixty five million people in the US or whatever the Cash App user base is are able to onboard to. So I think whilst there is a barrier right now, especially with podcasters, um, every year with more and more big companies adopting Lightning, I think that will only lower. And the other thing which I mentioned before is. There's not an alternative here. You know, the alternative is Patreon, which doesn't make sense for uh, podcasts. Because if you think about Patreon, you're paying a subscription. So every time your subscription renews, you have to think about, do I want to pay for this podcast that I maybe only, maybe I don't listen to every episode. Maybe, you know, I just dip in and out. Um, and so there's a lot of friction in signing up to Patreon. And there's also a lot of friction in staying subscribed to a podcast on Patreon. Whereas as you're listening, as you're consuming that amazing podcast content, if you can just press literally a button in the player, send a one-off payment, that's a much better experience for listeners. And it's a much um, better experience for podcasters at the end of the day, because they'll get paid more. And there's, there's not other technology that we could use. So once we explain that to podcasters, once we explain that this is the only technology that works, and this is not just Fountain, this is not just our crazy idea, you know, look, this is being adopted by Cash App, this is being adopted internationally, like this is happening. Those, once we have that conversation, it makes it a little bit easier, but there's definitely an initial hesitancy. I just wanted to announce that this podcast is now on Fountain. So if you guys want to boost us, go ahead. Nice, yeah, yeah hit the boost, send a message. One of the interesting things is that, um, and we've seen a few podcasters kind of, uh, not realize this is it's not enough just to lightning enable us you have to ask your audience to send you money and you have to ask them every single episode as well and you have to give them a good reason why they should actually send you money it's all part of the value for value uh, ethos that adam curry developed but you know you have to yeah you have to ask your audience to pay and you have to say to them you have to ask them in a way where it's convincing as well you have to say you know how much value are you actually getting from this show is it worth to you the same as a cup of coffee maybe well send me that or send me nothing if you don't think it was that valuable instead send me some feedback send me a question so that's a really important part of it too can you briefly explain like i'm trying to understand from user perspective if i was in, to get a problem right now how how would i you know fund my wallet you know you just mentioned that you know they have to get the lightning you get the Bitcoin and Lightning somewhere, and how do they, you know, I know I've seen, for, I see how the podcast do get paid, but how do the users, you know, to fund their wallets and actually send, you know, boost their the podcast? Yeah, great question. So right now, if you download Fountain, you can create a wallet in Fountain, and then you can fund that wallet um, from any other Lightning wallet. We don't allow you to buy Bitcoin within Fountain. 
uh, for you know regulatory reasons, but um, you can fund it from any uh, wallet that supports Lightning. So Cash App, Strike in the US, uh, Blue Wallet is one that we often recommend uh, internationally because you know it works really well and you can actually buy Bitcoin through MoonPay on Blue Wallet directly on Lightning. So that's the easiest on ramp for someone that's never used Lightning before. But yeah, that's also a challenge, right? Because as a brand new user, you want to experience boosting a podcast as soon as possible. And if, you know, the the easiest way right now is to download Blue Wallet, then buy through another company called MoonPay, and then wait for the confirmation to come through before transferring it back into Fountain. You know, it's not the it's not the most seamless thing. So that's also a challenge is, yeah, getting sats into people's hands. Uh, as soon as possible. How closely did you work with Adam Curry and Dave Jones uh, when you guys were developing the Fountain app? Yes. So, I mean, the great thing about what Adam and Dave are doing is that it's an open spec. So we actually didn't, you know, talk to them before we actually built the the payment, uh, the streaming technology within Fountain. We just built on top of the spec that they had already put out there. Obviously, before launching, you know, we sent them the app in, in beta and, and things like that. Um, but since then, we, we work quite closely with them. Um, I mean, Adam is the pioneer of the value for value model. And as I said before, like for podcasters, it's actually less about the technology and more about like the education around how do you actually ask your audience to support you. So that's like a really, really important piece. And, you know, I'd encourage anyone listening to go and check out some of the interviews Adam has done in order to find out what's the best way to ask for support. Yeah, I guess um, one thing you mentioned uh, was that like a lot of people were coming to Fountain and to Lightning, not because of investment or freedom or anything like that, but more because of the actual utility of podcasting. So, but and this is exactly the kind of thing, this is exactly the reason I like podcasting a lot. And this is exactly what I've been looking for. I always think that the best way for people to be orange-pilled is not usually number go up and it's not usually like you know freedom that's i think because a lot of people realistically in a lot of countries not all countries but a lot of the western world you know the us uk whatever a lot of people haven't ever really had problems with their money being censored or like that yeah then being able to not send money or a lot of people in those countries majority don't really have problems with any of these things and haven't to date experienced their government taking money out of their bank account or uh, super horrific devaluation of their currency to date, I should say, because I am now in the camp of people who believe that we're pretty screwed for the next couple of years, but we'll see. Um, so I, I think that having things like this, these tools is, is the best way for you to actually see the value in, in something like Bitcoin. And we kind of need more stuff like this, really. Um, so what you guys are doing is pretty... Uh, pretty good in my books how can people kind of like support you guys is the best way just to download the app and start using it or is there anything else best way is to just download fountain uh, you can import your podcast from apple or spotify or opml as well so yeah just download fountain um check it out and yeah just give us feedback we're working really hard on the core listener experience so if there's anything that you think is missing in terms of features just send us an email and we'll get that built for you um, and yeah, check out the clipping feature, create some clips, share them. We also have a clip playlist feature. So what you can do as a user on Fountain is create playlists of not only your own clips, but clips that you discover from others as well. So I've got a playlist on there about Bitcoin, I've got a playlist on there about podcasting 2.0, about value for value. So that's a great way that, you know, if you love podcasts, you know, why not start creating some clips of your favorite show? And that can actually you know, help new people discover the show. You can share that with the podcaster as well. But yeah, just download Fountain, check it out, and yeah, let us know if you have any feedback. I uh, did mention that, um, you know, you're a startup and you just, I uh, think, throwing the company. Um, and obviously, everybody knows that, you know, working, you know, going as a startup is always, you know, very hard. And would you consider, you know, I remember you, you, you did have motivation for creating um, Fountain. But would you consider taking out an invest investment you know, in the future? And if you do, first, you know, you also consider that you know you are opening yourself and your company make yourself vulnerable to you know outside external influences, you know, telling you to turn down the you know language of your podcast and all that censorship, censorship you know, stuff. So is this something that you consider doing? And if you did, how would you 
you know, deal with that. If not, you know, are you just going to continue on the path of, you know, hope for, you know, bootstrapping? Yeah, so we do actually have a small amount of, of funding. Um, so we already have, you know, taken some outside investment. And I guess I still fundamentally just see it as the way we started this was all about helping listeners discover and share the best moments from podcasts. So I think as long as we stick to that, uh, then we'll be fine. I think there's so much to do. I think people love podcasts so much, but the, the actual listening experience is, is very limited right now. It's limited in the sense of how you actually discover new content. You know, you just, your feed just ups, updates each day. And then it's also limited in terms of how do you actually share, but also experience listening to podcasts with other people as well, because it's quite a uh, individual thing, you know, like you don't normally talk about you know what you listen to what podcast you listen to or what went on in that conversation with with friends or family so yeah i think as long as we stick to that we'll be we'll be fine oscar how does the lightning part work it, um is it like a custodial node like are you guys ensuring the liquidity and stuff like that yeah so right now it is custodial we're looking at supporting various non-custodial options um i think for us like we're because we're onboarding people that have never really used bitcoin before or heard about bitcoin um introducing the non-custodial option uh, for that audience is going to be very difficult but i do think in the future what we want to do is give users the choice so you can either use the custodial wallet or potentially if you pay a bit of an upfront fee uh, you can switch to some kind of non-custodial setup whereby the um you know, this concept of like remote signer is, is starting to be uh, talked about now. So I think something like that would work quite well for us. Although on the podcaster side, it's a bit more difficult because obviously to receive, you need to be online. So the podcaster wallets do need to be online uh, 24-7. I guess, the, yeah, the, the podcast being online 24-7 can be quite a challenge. Like, have you guys been, how many podcasts have you guys been working with directly to help them kind of convert to this uh, this kind of approach yeah so we launched our fountain podcast the wallet feature in i think it was uh february of this year so it's, it's only been live for a couple of months and basically what this does is it allows any podcaster to basically lightning enable their show um in a couple of clicks on fountain and this is great because before that you'd have to actually run your own node, which again, a lot of podcasters not in the Bitcoin space are probably not going, going to want to do. Um, and yeah, we've had great response so far. One of the interesting things is um, when we initially uh, started, we thought that all of the value here would be the actual financial value, but it's actually so much more than that for podcasters because you get this incredible insight into which episodes are performing the best essentially and also which users are supporting you the most and also you have a, a messaging system with your listeners um, that works cross app as well so you know if you have a fountain podcast or wallet or if you're running your own node you'll be able to see the incoming boost messages from different apps which is kind of something that has not been possible before with podcasting just i'm just thinking now uh Something that I know you guys are working on was this like comments feature. Um, I, please uh, go ahead and tell everyone about that because obviously it's quite like an exciting development in the last uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, so basically what we've done with this new feature is we're surfacing all of the boosts publicly on the episode screen. And we're also hooking that into the social features that exist on Fountain. So what this means is that number one, if you go onto an episode page in Fountain, mm -hmm you'll be able to see all of the boosts that have been sent to that episode ranked by the number of Satoshis that have been attached to the boost. Um, and we think this is great because one, it just lets you see what other listeners are saying about that episode. It's important to say we also have the ability to set the boost to private if, if you want to do that. Um, but then secondly, uh, and sorry, that also incentivizes users to actually pay more because if you go onto the episode screen and you see the top boost is for 100,000 sats, are you more likely to boost 100 sats or 1,000 sats? So we think it's going to be beneficial for podcasters in that sense. Um, but then also, similarly to what I was saying about the clips being a signal about which episodes are good to listen to, the boosts are actually another great signal. So if, if I follow you on Fountain, 
and I see um, whether it's through a notification or on the episode screen that you've boosted, you know, a hundred thousand sats to this episode with a very long message saying this was an incredible episode. I learned so much. I can't wait for the next, you know, that kind of thing. That's really good signal for you that that episode is worth paying attention to and, and worth listening to. So that's another reason why we think surfacing the boost public is is really exciting. So yeah, that features live now. If you go on to any episode screen from a lightning enabled podcast such as this one uh, you'll be able to see all of the boosts oscar are the users able to interact with each other um i know like with sphinx chat there there was like a chat room that the podcasters could have uh called a tribe and like say we both listen to no agenda adam curry's podcast could we like chat with each other about the latest episode yeah so right now you can actually reply to boost so if i left a boost on no agenda and you saw that boost you'd be able to reply to me however one caveat is i'm I'm not sure we've quite figured out the right balance here because as a podcaster that can be quite confusing for example if you see an incoming message that was actually a reply so we're still figuring out exactly um how that interaction should go but i think we've we've taken the first step which is allowing any fountain user to see what the boost messages are from other users and also allow them to reply.